So recently on Vimeo, I discovered this very uh, talented um, animator. His name is Nikita Daikur. I apologize if I jacked up his name, but um, he has a very interesting way of animating that I did not, uh, I was not aware of until now because of him. Uh, please be sure to check out his Vimeo channel uh, as well as check out his. Um, Kickstarter a page that he has. I'll have all those links in the descriptions. But basically what he does is he creates marionettes in, uh, within Cinema 4D. And the cool thing about this is, um, you know, basically me and myself, I'll admit, I'm not too interested in creating uh, what is referred to as reality, meaning that I'm not interested in creating very lifelike animation, you know, with a facial expression. I'm not interested in creating, you know, models that look realistic as possible. I just... That does not interest me. So when I found this guy, his style of creating, you know, uh, animation and his 3D modeling, uh, just the way how he does it really got my interest, and I think it's really, really cool as shit. So, uh, you know, he he designed this uh, marionette st style of animating by, you know, creating puppets with dynamics, and they're all pretty much stringed up with uh, within Cinema 4D, and, they're, and through those strings, he's able to move them around and... Pretty much the dynamics does the rest of the work, which I think is really awesome. So he just sets up the puppets and he, you know, keyframes, you know, the movement of the strings and the puppet pretty much moves on according to, you know, the movement of the strings, right? Yeah, so please check out his Vimeo channel and be sure to, like, you know, follow him and also check out his Kickstarter page, please, as well as his Facebook. I'll have that I'll link to that in the description as well. Okay, so there's no tutorial of the how to create a marionette, not, not yet at least. So basically that's how I started to mess around with this. I want to figure out how to create something similar to what he has, right? Now, I'm nowhere near as good as he is. I'm still learning Cinema 4D. So by me making this video, I'm kind of hoping that more people will get influenced with the style of animating. Maybe they can create more tutorials so, you know, everyone, everyone can learn more from each other right all right so as you can see I have a bunch of rigs going um, the one I want to focus on mainly is the marionette in the center so basically this is like the wooden figure that you can find in your model section here you know this guy so pretty much what I did was I found a tutorial from uh, from a YouTube channel called rate my funeral not rape rate <laughs> right and pretty much he did a ragdoll simulation with this model and he pretty much he goes step by step on how to um, set up all the he uses hand connectors between here the where the body meets say like the head meets this part of this ball this ball to like the body then this uh, chest area to like the joints and um, as you can see here here's the body this is pretty much the rig for like the head Here's the rig for the upper body, you know, from the upper body goes to like the left arm. All this is just for one arm right here, as well as the the other arm. And then I did the same with the torso. So from the head, I put like a hinge, which is like a fixed connector here. Then I connect it to the neck. Then from the neck, I put another uh, hinge to connect to like the body, right? Let me show you a better example here on the arm. So from the shoulder, I put a hinge, which is like a fixed hinge connector. Uh, to find the connector, pretty much you go to uh, simulation, go to dynamics, and you hit connect right here. And then you pretty much you can select what type of connector that you want. Uh, more or less, like I said, check out Rate My Funeral. Like I have the, fun the tutorial in the descriptions. Uh, I may add a annotation as well so you can guys you know, check out his uh, work because he does a way better job explaining things than I do. Not only that, I mean, his video is like a, almost an hour long so there's no way in hell I'm going to do that. <laughs> so, fuck that. So anyways, like I was saying, you know, so from this shoulder, you make it a hinge from the chest to this thing. Now you select the ball, then you have to create a hinge from this ball to the upper arm which is here then you know it just goes on and goes on and goes on it's just like it's pretty big um i'm like i like the results well, the only problem that i'm having is as you can see here the dynamics like this uh the right wrist of the marionette here is jiggling so i'm trying to figure it out once you figure out to get uh your model here pretty much having all the connectors within the joints of the body to you know 
to be all ragdoll like pretty much uh the next thing you need to do is basically you want to connect a spring to one of say like the hand to a object which is it works as a control right so in this case i have the box connected to the hand right and i use a spring connector the way how I had got the idea to use the spring is through YouTube channel Quick VFX. Um, I'll have a link to that as well in the description as well as an annotation on the video. And pretty much it shows you how to use the dynamic splines. Now a spline, pretty much what it does is uh, you can add you can add a spline and make a string appear here, but that does not work as a um, connector directly. It won't affect like the arm or the box here. Pretty much it just you know. You just give it a shape because if you were to render this, you know you don't see it. So when you do a spline, and then you add some material to it, you, you'll be able to see a um, the string here, right? But uh, in this case, it just wanted basically the the character you know floating by itself, and I used the spring connector to support the hand to this box here. So I mean, it's we're it's getting there. It's cool. Though I first try using joints. But joints does not have a real dynamics physics. Um, joints, when you put joints in a model, when you move the model around using the joints, what it does is kind of like it stretches the pixels as if with a skin tag, right? Once you bind it. So if you were to use this rig and setup for a model, then not only do you have to set up the joints to create a skin, you know, dynamics, most likely you have to set up some type of uh, bone structure as in um, say this box over here and then like you know you have to link everything up you know I'll try to do a little test here with we'll pretend like this was an arm so yeah it's uh, it's in the works but like I said I haven't seen too many videos on how to do this so I'm doing this in hopes that more kids will get interested to like you know create uh, more animations using this method and hopefully more down the line I can learn more, better what to do rather than doing this shit because this is very amateur at best right so anyways um, that's pretty much all I have for you um, a cool thing you can do with this uh, rigging is since obviously all of his joints are basically floating around what you can do is hit control D drop the gravity to zero whoops or negative zero and the guy starts floating up or what I did was uh, let's put it to zero let's see play that back again and uh, yeah I don't know just watching like the model float around like in in space is actually pretty cool so <laughs> I actually rendered this guy out uh, floating around like this and uh, I'm gonna see if I can make a video out of this somehow so yeah subscribe for that if you're interested and watching more of my experimental videos as well as uh, random tutorials like these things, right? So, all right, anyways, that's all I have. I want to keep this video short and please check out the descriptions. Uh, check out the links that I have available there. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. Bye.